Good morning. Good morning. I invite you to rise in body or spirit and join in the call to worship. There is none like you, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. All the peoples you have made shall come and bow down before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things for you alone our God.
trusting in the power of God, not only to fashion the world, but to mend and refashion our hearts. Let us say how it is with us. Let us pray. Holy God, like people long indulged, we are quick to presume your pardon, your sanction of the way we live. We turn away from neighbors in need sharing fragments that remain only after our cravings have been met. Merciful Maker, you created us for better use. Remake us now, where we are distorted, recenter and reshape us. Bring us low and raise us up. Then fire our hearts until we shine with your glory and find our place in your purpose. Amen. Through Jesus Christ, forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. In Christ, we have redemption through the blood of the cross the forgiveness of sins according to the richness of his grace. Thanks be to God.
you may be seated. Welcome to today's service of worship here at First Presbyterian Church. And whether you are here in person or whether you are watching online, we welcome you. But ask you also to um, fill out with the, one of the yellow forms that are at the table here. Or if you are at home, you can send us a chat to let us know that you are here. If you have a prayer concern, if you would put that on one of the orange cards or put that in the chat line, then we will make sure that that is shared with the whole congregation. All these items that um, you need to send us are here. Um, if you're here in person, these are in the basket on your, on your plate. The mission committee coordinates a monthly meal that is to be served to the clients at United Caring Services. The September cooking team is looking for donations of desserts. So if you would be willing to donate a pie or a cobbler, something that would serve approximately 10 people, if you can share um, a sweet finish to the meal on September 9th, please contact Debbie Meyer and the contact information is printed in the bulletin or you can call the office and get her information as well. As a new school year begins to settle in, our church musicians are returning to their weekly rehearsals and offerings in worship. Now is the perfect time to join the choir, adults as well as children. If you're interested in being a part of the music of this church, if you're interested, please contact Robert Nichols and he will be glad to give you the information that you need. Next Sunday, September 11th, is the Sunday School for Children will return at a new time. It will be during the 1030 service of worship. Children pre-K through um, grade five will be coming to worship with family members. And then during the children's time, after the children's time, they will be leaving and going to their class, and then returning back to the worship service during the closing hymn. So if, and if you are interested in working with these very excited and energetic children, um, please contact Jerusha or myself. We also will be returning to having a children's Sunday school for a nursery, which will be babies and toddlers, um, but that will not be next week. We need a little bit more of a delay, so stay tuned and we will give you information about that. That should be coming fairly soon though. If you're curious about First Presbyterian Church, and you have attended and are interested in knowing more about the church, more about being Presbyterian, um, or possibly interested in joining the church, you can join Jerusha Van Camp and Pastor John for hopefully coffee if we get to a um, stage yellow with COVID next week. And so this also will be next week, September 11th, and this will be at 9.30, so between the two services. And that's a great time just to learn more about the church, or if you have decided you wanna join the church, we would welcome you to come to that, meet, that session. We're very glad that you are here this morning, and whether you are here in person or online, also a reminder, we will be having communion. So if you are here in person, if you picked up your little individual cup and wafer, 
Or if you were at home, if you would go get a cracker or a piece of bread and some juice, then you will be able to join us um, and participate with that holy sacrament. Let us continue our worship of God. Let us pray. Holy and merciful God, we have come to hear your word. Help us to bear it and brave it. Break down in us all that resist your will and plant in us a willingness to turn, or we would be your disciples. We pray in the name of Jesus, our light. Amen. My tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge that I cannot attain it. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end, and I am still with you. The lesson from Hebrew Scriptures this morning comes from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 18, beginning with verse 1. Listen for God's word. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, Come, go down to the potter's house, and there I will let you hear my words. So I went down to the potter's house, and there he was working at his wheel. The vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand, and he reworked it into another vessel, as seemed good to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me, Can I not do with you, O house of Israel, just as this potter has done? Just like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. At one moment I may declare concerning a nation or a kingdom, that I will pluck up and break down and destroy it. But if that nation concerning which I have spoken turns from its evil, I will change my mind about the disaster that I intended to bring on it. And at another moment, I may declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will build and plant it. But if it does evil in my sight, not listening to my voice, then I will change my mind about the good that I had intended to do for it. Now, therefore, say the people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, thus says the Lord, Look, I am the potter shaping evil against you and devising a plan against you. Turn now, all of you, from your evil way and amend your ways and your doings. The word of the Lord. Be to 
The gospel reading is from Luke, the 14th chapter of Luke, verses 25 to 33. Listen for God's word for you. Now large crowds were traveling with him, and he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even life itself, cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going out to wage a war against another king, will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000. If he cannot, then, while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for the terms of peace. So therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. The word of the Lord. You may be happy to hear that I will not be preaching on this passage from Luke 14. <laughs> it would certainly qualify as one in a series of sermons I might title, Things We Wish Jesus Didn't Say. Jesus, uh, uh, I, give, uh, I give Jesus benefit, the benefit of the doubt by thinking, Maybe all this stuff about family, hating family members and giving up your possessions was a way for Jesus to weed out the thrill seekers and the groupies. Bruce Epperly writes that in many ways, the Lucan passage reflects a form of theological hyperbole that presents an impossible possibility as a way of turning upside down our typical way of seeing things. In the end, Epperly couldn't persuade me. I honestly felt that there wasn't anything in these verses after a superficial examination that this church needed to hear at this particular time in its life. Instead, I felt there was more fertile soil in the passage from Jeremiah that Wendy read that would be equally comforting and challenging for we all know that we both, both are needed at this time and our churches struggle to both remember and move forward. Pottery has been a dominant image the church has taken from this passage and many Christians will hear uh, many hymns and songs uh, through this passage about potters and clay ingrained in their hearts and minds. Remember this one. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting, yielded and still. Our passage starts out like this old hymn in a way we can all understand and appreciate. If the, it's the potter's, it's the potter, excuse me, at work. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, come, go down to the potter's house, and there I will let you know, I will let you hear my words. So I went down to the potter's house, and there he was working at his wheel. The vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand, and he re reworked it into another vessel as seemed good to him. One of my biggest regrets as, a art, as an art major at Calvin College, now Calvin University, was not taking a turn at the potter's wheel when I was in ceramics class. Instead, I sculpted a, uh, what turned out to be a dreadful clay bust of a man's head and a coil pot I fashioned with long, thin bands of clay, which we now teach in elementary school. But I did watch in fascination 
as, the, as Professor Carl Heisman shaped several fine bowls, cups, and vases in, into at the kick wheel, which was the ancient method used at the time of Jeremiah, and that many traditional potters still use today. Some use the, the pedal. It may look easy in, Mr. Heist, in Dr. Heisman's hands, but it's not. If you watch a potter from the beginning to, to completion, you will see it's a series of, uh, it's a serious enterprise with many stops and starts along the way. One wrong application of pressure from your left thumb, not enough or too much spin from the wheel can be enough to turn a nicely developed vase or cup into a collapsed mess. But skilled potters can also be remarkable for how, for how quickly they can rescue such a mess by instantly starting to fashion a whole new vessel. It's a project that looks almost magical. This back and forth passage from Jeremiah from verse five on recounts that process of making and discarding and making and discarding again. It is what God intends for Jeremiah to witness when the Lord commands Jeremiah to go to the potter's house where he will see the potter at work using the same process as the skilled potter that I described above. Then the Lord, word of the Lord came to Jeremiah saying, Can I do with you, O Israel, house of Israel, just as a potter has done? Just like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. That's usually as far as people tend to go with this passage because it's comforting and reassuring, assuming that God's intention is only good and formative. But the Lord goes on to say that the spoiled clay represents the sins of the kingdom of Israel, which is meant to include, by the way, of the southern kingdom of Judah, and that God will pluck and break down, pluck up and break down and destroy unless the nation turns from its evil ways. And likewise, if it turns from evil, God will change God's mind and refashion their hearts of clay and restore the kingdom. In each case, God changes the divine intent based on the actions of the people and their leaders. Besides these verses in chapter 18 in Jeremiah, there are 11 other references to potters in scripture, all of, all of which are in the Old Testament, repeating much of the same theme as Jeremiah. Isaiah, in one instance, writes seemingly tongue in cheek, woe to you who strive with, you, with your maker, earthen vessels within the potter, with the potter, does the potter, does the clay uh, say to the one who fashions it, what are you making, or your work has no handles? Whether or not Isaiah meant to be funny, the word that came to Jeremiah is clear and unambiguous. God is the potter, and the clay is the nation of Judah to whom he prophesies. Jeremiah speaks of Judah as, as simultaneous with Israel, but Israel has already been taken into captivity and only, only Judah remains now. And this nation represented as a defective clay blob because of its idolatry and acts of social injustice is in danger of being scrapped and put in the waste bucket for good unless it re repents and returns again to doing what is right. Now, therefore, say to the people of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, thus says the Lord, look, I am a potter shaping evil against you and developing a plan against you. Turn now all of you from your evil way and amend your ways and your doings. The last verse kind of leaves you hanging, doesn't it? A discarded clay of a misshapen vessel can be remixed and reworked into a new vessel again and again unless the clay is beyond saving, which is what is implied here. Will Judah turn from its sin? 
Will the Lord God change the divine mind again? Will the reshaping continue? Well, to be continued in a later sermon. Where does that leave us? As Christians, we believe God reshaped a new covenant with his incarnation of Jesus, who after his death and resurrection became the universal Christ whom we worship and serve. When the Holy Spirit came, the Church of Jesus Christ took shape and is still alive today and reshaping still. The Spirit is reshaping the Church both as individual members and as a community of faith. And that brings us up, and that brings us, brings up some provocative questions. First, where in your story has God used events to reshape your life as a potter that is working the clay? Where are you now being called to change? And how is your life taking shape into a vessel for Christ? When this shaping comes, be reassured that it will be the means for recreating you into what God desires. Commentator John de Beauvoir suggests that legitimate though it may be to imagine God reshaping and shaping and reshaping our individual lives, Jeremiah here is primarily concerned about the life of the called community. In Jeremiah's case, the Jewish people, in our case, the Church of Christ. Both are part of God's plan for renewal and reformation. So, what is God doing at the potter's wheel to shape and form First Presbyterian Church of Evansville? Where are we in this process of molding and remolding that God is doing? We are not finished a finished product, but still a work in progress. And in all likelihood, we will never be finished. So what stories from the life of this church lift up faithful narratives of people who reform their minds or transform their behaviors in the face of crisis as God's impetus for change? What stories from the life of this church cooperate, uh, corporate ministry has transformed the life of the larger community of Evansville and beyond? We still have an opportunity to remember and relive these stories within the last two months of 2022. Again, as with our individual lives, the reshaping that has been done here and the remaking that is sure to continue will be the means for recreating this church into what God desires for it. Biblical scholar Sally, Ann, Sally A. Brown beautifully envisions that at the end of the day, a potter steps away from the wheel covered with the stuff of her art, spattered head to foot with clay. Jeremiah envisions God up to God's elbows of our making and remaking. The stuff of God's remaking is demonstrated for us for all time in the spattered blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for us and for the world, represented in the cup of salvation from which we will drink. Which brings us back, if you believe it, to the passage that I didn't want to preach, for, preach on. It is the price that Jesus knew he was going to have to pay through suffering when he went to Jerusalem and the cost he expected of his followers if they were going to go all the way with him. It is what we have come to know as the cost of discipleship, being ready to let go of everything that stands in the way of our following the Christ of God. So, so if you as a person and we as a body of Christ are willing to be clay in the hands 
of the skilled and resolute Master Potter. Be ready to be reshaped into the image of God's Son, Jesus Christ. Richard Rohr, in his book, The Universal Christ, wrote that Jesus did not come to change God's mind about us. It did not need change. Jesus came to change our minds about God and about ourselves. But beware, because this changing is going to cost something. We won't be the same as we once were. Being clay in the hands of the great potter will transform you. It will transform us as a church. And it is up to us to decide whether we have it in us to be reshaped. To our creator God and the crucified one, be all honor and glory and blessing. Amen. Please remain standing as we profess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. 
All that we are points back to our Creator. All that we have is a gift and trust. God will finish what God has begun. We have the privilege of taking part. With grateful hearts, let us, lift, let us bring our tithes and our offerings to the God from whom they came. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give our best, lest in gaining the world we lose life itself. As a covenant people, we seek to witness to your will and way. Help us to know more clearly what you have, you would have to us to do with the wealth entrusted to our care. As we contribute to the needs of your people, we present ourselves as living sacrifices. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. We have a number of prayer concerns today. We pray for peace and assurance for Tiffany and for healing for her premature baby who's having difficulty with breathing issues and is in ICU. Peace and comfort for all who have health problems or who are in need of healing. We pray for safe travels for all who are traveling this weekend and blessings of safety and excitement for learning for all the students and teachers as they begin a new school year. We pray for wisdom and patience for the interim pastor search committee we pray for peace and comfort 
for all those who are at the end of their lives and looking forward to the hope and promises that God gives each one of us. We also pray for gratitude and joy and God's grace for all the rain that we received and the parched earth that has now turned green again. We lift all these prayers and those that remain in our hearts up to you, O oh God. Hear our prayer. Brothers, sisters, and others in Christ, the gospel tells us that on the first day of the week, the day on which our Lord rose from the dead, he appeared to some of his disciples and was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Come then, one and all, to the joyful feast of our Lord. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to, to the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to, to give, give thanks, thanks and praise. And praise. Blessed be your name, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for you have revealed yourself to the only, the eternal, the great I am, to lead your people out of bondage to the land of promise. In the fire of the prophets, you spoke of a day when every sin and sorrow would be burned away and all the earth would be ablaze with your glory. In the fullness of time, you revealed your way of overcoming evil in the crucible of your son's passion and death. Through his resurrection, you proclaimed once again that you are the great I am for all generations. And so we give thanks with your church on earth and all the company of heaven as we say, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord God, as you made the earth beneath Moses' feet holy ground, sanctify this meal to bring us into your sacred presence. As we remember your son's saving mercies, send down your spirit to anoint your church for ministry. By that same spirit, bless this bread and cup that we may be, that it may be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Sending God, you commissioned your prophets for a purpose beyond their comprehension. Send forth your church within an, an imagination shaped for your kingdom. Give your disciples grace to bless those who persecute them, to be patient in suffering, to persevere in prayer, and to rejoice in hope. Stretch every heart to find life in you by losing it and strengthen your people with courage and wisdom to take up their cross and follow your son. Make your people on earth ready for a purpose beyond our imagining, a life beyond our deserving, a glory beyond our reckoning. Until your kingdom comes on earth as it is in heaven, bring us with the saints into your eternal holy ground, aflame with your love now and forever. Hear us now as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught when he said, Our, Our Father, Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done. done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us, us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive, forgive our debtors. debtors. And, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine, thine is the kingdom, kingdom and, and the power, and, and the glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it. 
saying, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet in your kingdom. Send us out now in the power of your Holy Spirit to live and work in your, to your praise and glory for the sake of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen.
Let's make it. 